Hello, hello. Welcome to Ask Me Monday. I am your host, Vicki Howell, and I am thrilled, as always, to begin this week creatively with you. If you are watching live, please, as you log on, tell us where you're watching from and what you knit or crocheted or painted or wrote or photographed over the weekend. We just want to hear how you were creative, if you've got links to share, um, you know, please post. We love to share. Remember, the comment section is your community. If you're watching later on YouTube and are only here for the tutorial, I will put the time that that starts in the um, description. Uh, please also click subscribe, YouTube. Um, and also, you have to click on the little bell notification. On Facebook, if you have not already clicked follow or like on my Facebook page, you also have to go in and click follow to be notified of these videos. Oh my goodness, a lot of business to be done. But I said it, and now we're good. Um, if you are watching later recorded also, please just type your questions in the comment section, and I will come back later and answer them as I can. Everyone else that is watching uh, live, please feel free to um, ask me as we go, and if I catch them, then I will answer them. Okay, today, I'm maybe going to blow your minds a little bit. So I woke up at like three in the morning, as I do sometimes with my mind racing, and I was thinking like my original plan for today's Ask Me Monday did not work out well, and I was thinking, you know what? I've been wanting forever to figure out crochet stitches on knitting needles. So here's the scoop. Um, years ago, like maybe 14 years ago, Lily Chen, great veteran designer, amazing, check her out if you have not, um, she came on to Nitty Gritty, and she taught how to create crochet stitches with knitting needles. I don't remember what stitches. I don't remember what we made. I just remember how amazing it was. I have Googled. I have done all kinds of search. Lily doesn't keep a huge web presence. It's not her gig. Um, and I just haven't seen her to talk about it. So this morning, I decided I would kind of figure it out. So today, I'm going to show you my version. Hers might be more um, structurally sound. No, that's not the way I want to put it. More efficient than mine, but my version of knit single crochet. These are U.S. terms. Knit double crochet and knit triple crochet. Mine. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if you were a knitter and you're just not into crocheting or don't want to learn how to crochet, this is when you would you would go for that. If you wanted that really different look. If you do know how to crochet, stick with it for, for the same look. It's fast, or it's much faster. But the difference between knitting and crochet is one is loops over loops, knitting. Crochet is more like knots, so it's going to have a little bit more um, sort of girth to it. And this is really great. We've been talking a lot about warmer weather knitting and crochet lately. And, um, you know, as it gets hotter, it's already in the 90s here in, in Austin, Texas. I'm thinking about different ways that we can keep stitching while it is hotter. So in the, over the past few episodes, we've covered open weave stitches for knitting and for crocheting, uh, a really lacy beaded ascot. So today I wanted to talk about these stitches, but they're because they're great. All this, you know, it's kind of fun and, and novel, but also they're all great for summer bags and tops and two of the three are great for a nice summer scarf the first one the knit single crochet not as much because just like its crochet sister it really is um stiffer and more dense now i have put swatches practice swatches up on my website let me see if i can post that live right now and you can go there after this may not let me do it Okay, I'll have to post it in the comments section after. Um, you can go there and I will, I wrote out the description and then gave you quick swatches. So this is super fun. I would love to see your finished swatches and how you apply them to projects. Just make sure to tag at Vicki Howell and so I can see it. Okay, this episode is brought to us courtesy of Knitter's Pride if you're in North America, Knit Pro if you're anywhere else. They are a great needles and tools and hooks company. They're very supportive of the community um, and of, of my work personally, professionally, personally. Uh, so I highly recommend checking them out if you have not already. So all needles that you see here are uh, by Knitter's Pride slash Knit Pro. I've also linked to them individually on my website. 
Okay. Oh, and I see there's questions coming. Raylin, hi. She wants to know what the um, scarf on the mannequin is. This was from Interweave for my kits and also a pattern that I did for them for the yarn craft collection. This, I believe, is Malabrigo and... Uh, I think this is the Echo Park asymmetrical scarf. I think I'll look it up and I'll put and I'll post it. But the scarf is still available both in kit form and in pattern form on the Interweave website. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, I love to see that you're posting where you're from and what you're making. Um, if you are finding that you are seeing glitches, this is a live feed. Almost always the recorded feed catches up and does not have the issues. Please, if you know anybody that might be fascinated by knitting crochet stitches, share this video. It really helps people to find me if people on Facebook and YouTube are sharing. So thank you. I appreciate that. Over the weekend, I worked on, I knit, or I'm sorry, I crocheted an entire granny square baby blanket out of super chunky yarn for the Knit Show book. And I also worked on um, a demonstration piece for the Yarnier group. Uh, those who are part of the the Yarn, Yarnier May box are all, also part of our private Facebook group, and I'm showing them how to do all the different steps in the uh, project that we're making, these really cool mitts. And so I worked on that as well, and then I took a little bit of time off, like the second half of yesterday off, to enjoy Mother's Day with my three kids and my husband and my mother-in-law who just moved to Austin. Um, it was really, really lovely. So I hope all of you who, thank you, Amber, for sharing. I really appreciate, I hope all of you that are mothers, have mothers, like your mothers, <laughs> um, and celebrate it. I hope you had a lovely day for the rest of you. I hope you had a lovely just Sunday. Um, thank you, Melanie, for comment, for liking my necklace. Um, I actually made this, or painted, I mean, I didn't uh, turn the wood. I painted this at Craftcation. This was a breakout session taught by Anna Joyce, um, the dyer that I've mentioned before, and she was also Craftish, my podcast guest. And it was just really zen and fun to just sit there and paint wooden beads. So I haven't worn it yet. So yay. Okay. Now, without further ado, let's flip over. We're going to start today with my version, Knit Single Crochet, which I am abbreviating KSC. And you'll again, you'll see that on my website when I post the link after. It's just vickihell.com and you'll click on how to knit crochet stitches. Okay. The first, I'm working on straights today. You guys have been with me. Some of you have been with me long enough to know that sometimes my tripod, not, uh, not high enough to work with straights. I don't work with them a lot. So if you hear a lot of like clanging, apologies in advance. All right, I'm flipping over. Okay, so I have a little square that I thought would be easy. Okay, so let me move this and get situated here. All right, so the first stitch we're going to work on, as I mentioned, is mocking a single crochet. Now, those of you that are crocheters are going to probably say, well, that's way more open weave than crochet. It is, it is knitting, it's going to be different. But if you look very close, the top portion of the stitch looks very, very similar to an actual single crochet. This would be a great stitch for something that you needed um, some a little bit of sturdiness to it, but you also wanted it to have a little bit of openness as well. Uh, perhaps the bottom of a bag versus an entire bag, or really an entire bag would be great. Okay, so to make the knitted single crochet, you are going to knit the first stitch, leave the stitch on the left-hand needle, yarn over just that right-hand needle, and then knit the stitch again. Okay, you'll now have three loops where you used to have one. So, in, so you actually increased, but we're not increasing. What we wanna do is we wanna take the first two loops and pass them over the last one, and that creates the single crochet. Now, I'm gonna show you again. We are going to Knit the stitch, 
leaving it on the left hand needle. Yarn over again, knit the stitch. Now what I'm doing with passing over these two, these two loops over this stitch mocks the same thing that a hook would do if we were working in single crochet. So normally a hook would pull this last one, this last loop or first loop, I guess, off the top, pull it through the next two loops on the hook. So we're creating that same idea by essentially pulling that loop through the two other loops. So it's the same concept. You're getting the length from the from the yarn overs, so that's where that's coming, but it really is cool how it kind of works. So I'm gonna show you one more and then we'll move on to the next one. Um, so Rose just made a great comment. Uh, point The pointier the tips, the better. Lace needles are great. These are Knitter's Prize Zings. They have really a nice pointy tip um, and that is, it doesn't matter as much with this one. This one isn't that big of a deal, but when we get up to the treble uh, and also the double, um, it really does make it easier. Okay. And like I said, I made this up this morning. So if any of, of you have seen this done a different way, cool, share it if you'd like. This is just my own little experiment inspired by Lily Chin. And that's it. And then you would just you would just do that all the way across. Hi, Debbie. I did not show this before. I just made this up this morning. OK, so the next stitch we're going to learn and these needles I'm going to move over to. I love these are the Royale needles so that they are birch. They're shiny birch, but they have the metal tip. So as Rose just mentioned, we want that kind of pointy metal tip these have them. So it's kind of the best of both worlds because I love working with wool and wood together. Um, this yarn is Farmer's Daughter Fibers, Juicy D DK. All of the yarn I'm working with today is. Okay. And those of you that are part of May's Yarnier are working with this yarn right now in different colors. Okay. So now we're going to work on my version of a knit double crochet. I'm abbreviating this as KDC. Again, like with the single crochet, you're going to see that there's going to be these long, elongated stitches that come from the yarn overs, but it, the crochet part that's mocked is where the knotting is at the top. Okay, so we will first yarn over, and for the first stitch, that just means lay the yarn over the needle. You're going to knit the stitch let it drop off. Then you're going to yarn over again that left hand needle. Oh, hey, Knitter's Pride is watching. Hi, Knitter's Pride. We're working with your Royale needles right now. Okay, then you're going to slide. So you insert the left hand needle into those two loops, the first two loops, and you're going to pass them over. Did I do it? I may not have done it. Let's try that again. Okay, so we are Knitting the stitch. Back it up. I started talking and then got, uh, got cocky. Okay, so we are knitting the stitch with the yarn over ahead of it. We are yarn, yarning over one more time. And then we are going to pass, and sometimes for this first one, because you don't have any stability of the other stitches, it helps to do them one at a time. That's what I should have done the first time to show you. But again, I got cocky. Okay. And that is the double crochet. So let me show you again. So now the first one is always the most persnickety. You're going to yarn over before you start the stitch, knit the stitch, yarn over again, and either at the same time or one at a time. And again, this is mocking the crochet hook would normally pull this yarn over through the two loops if we were crocheting. So we're just mocking that same movement. Yeah, it's much easier. You can see now that I have one on, on the needle to pull those two over. And there it is. Okay, I'm going to show you one more time. And then we'll move on. I'm knitting that stitch. I did, I did a yarn over first. I now have this extra loop over here. I'm going to yarn over one more time. And then I'm going to pass those 
two stitches. And since I did it two at a time last time, I'm gonna do it one at a time just to show you that you can do it. It's exactly the same effect. And you would do that all the way across. So that is my version of the crocheted double, or excuse me, knit double crochet. Now this one I think would be would be nice and drapey for a scarf. It would also really, it would work as a shell, you know, to, to layer over a tank top or whatever. Super fun. Okay, the last one I wanna show you is, I'm also working on Royales and I've gone up a needle size just because I wanted to play. So a taller stitch and larger needles. The others were US sixes, um, four millimeters. I'm sorry, fives, these are sixes. The others were fives, 3.75 millimeters. These are sixes, also Royales. And what I did here, and again, I'm working in US terms today, so um, I'll put the what the translations would be on my website as well, if you are not in the, in the US of A. Okay. Uh, and the brand is uh, of the needles is Knitter's Pride. Okay, so for this one, so for double, we yarned over one time. So for triple, we need to yarn over twice. Now again, the first time, the first stitch is a, is a little weird. I'm only wrapping the yarn around that right-hand needle. And again, if you think, you know, anybody that would be interested in this video, please share it for me, thank you. Okay, so we'll knit that stitch and now, you have one, two, three, four stitches, or loops rather, on your right hand needle. So we need to get back to that one. So we're gonna yarn over again, and this one, I found that these first two loops, what we need to do is we need to yarn over and pull through two loops twice. So I'm yarn overing, yarn overing? Yarning over, I think yarning over is grammatically correct. I found that the first two stitches, it's a lot easier to do them once one at a time. It, it has to do with the nature of the orientation of that first yarn over. Let's see if I can do it without getting out of shot while I'm trying to look at it. Okay, so that's, that's the first time. So I'm gonna yarn over again. The second time, for whatever reason, I think it's because they've loosened up and also, like I said, the orientation, it's not difficult to get both at the same time. You do you, you could do it either way. Um, Holly, have I figured out how to convert patterns with this yet? Well, considering I only figured out how to do this, I taught myself to do this this morning, I'm a little behind on pattern conversion, but I will explore that later if you're interested. Okay, so that is my triple knit, triple crochet. Let's do it again. We're gonna yarn over twice. Knit that next stitch. Yarn over again. Pass the first two stitches over that yarn over. One. And this is where having these pointy needles really does help. Yarn over one more time. And then those last two loops need to go over that yarn over. And there we go. Look how open. This would be great for a scarf. I'm also thinking if you combined it with my, with lap as a scarf, just every row. Okay, I'm gonna show you one last time. Hi Gail, hi Debbie. If you've missed all of this tutorial, you can watch it again. I'll post it as a recorded version. Okay, so I'm gonna yarn over twice, insert the stitch. So I've knit that, got these loops on my needle. So we're gonna yarn over past the first two. Yeah, see, I'm trying to get two, and I really just like doing that first pass one at a time. So I'm gonna drop off the first, and because they're yarn over, sometimes I even take my nail because, you know, if you're gonna have dragon lady nails, you might as well use them every once in a while. And then yarn over this last time and insert into the next two loops that you've created. I'm gonna do that one more time because I was reading a comment and I wasn't looking down. Apparently multitasking on a Monday is not my... Uh... There we go, let's do this again. All right, we're gonna yarn over. 
twice. Insert. Now we've got our loops on the right hand needle. Yarn over. We're going to pass the first two stitches over the tip of the needle. Yarn over one last time and pull those next two stitches Okay, well clearly I'm going to do it one at a time because my yarn's being fussy. Over the stitch. And because I don't like that that wasn't as smooth as silk for you, I'm doing it one last time. Yarn over twice. Knit the stitch. Yarn over. Pass the first two loops. Over that stitch, yarn over again, pass the next two loops, either one at a time or twice, over, and there we go. And that, my friends, is how it's done, finally. Third time's a charm. All right, and that's really all there is to it. It's a fun way to kind of shake things up if you want a, that knotted look, especially for some summer pieces, but you're not into the crochet. This is a great option. Again, if you go to my website, which is vickihowell.com, and I will also post the link in the show notes in the comments section, section, then I have the swatches and explanations on there as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip around and answer a couple questions. So I saw a question come through um, that says, how does this compare to crochet fabric as far as drape goes? So it, it actually, it's drapier. Um, it's not as stiff because of those, of those yarn overs that we're doing. Um, those create a little bit of openness and it's that openness that really gives you kind of that sort of easy breezy feel. So it is, it is absolutely, um, kind of lighter and airier and even for these even for treble crochets so even though the height's probably about the same because only the knotted portion is at the top and not the whole body the body is just these two loops it's going to be a little less dense as well so like I said not an exact replica of crochet but it kind of gives you the look you can play along with crochet without crocheting you know, and I like everybody to feel included. So that is where today's tutorial came from. Please share if you're like, whoa, this kind of blew my mind. I want to show my friends. How do I crochet knits or knit crochet stitches? Then just share it. Um, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and also click, you have to click like, but also click follow so you'll get notifications. This is like, we're in the 90s now of how many episodes there are. I think this is 97, 98. So there's a ton of content. If you're on Facebook, just go to my page and click on videos and you can watch the last, you know, as many as you want. We cover all kinds of things, including knit, crochet, some um, other crafts as well, um, and also like crafty business stuff and that type of thing. If you're on YouTube, please click su subscribe be below. And also you have to click the little notification bell because they make you work for it. All right, post your questions and I will come onto the boards this afternoon and answer them. If you are interested in checking out my new business, the Yarnier, please go to vickihell.com and click on Yarnier. We have sold out of the May box, but I'm putting pictures up of what, what's in there so you can kind of get a reference point. But you can get on the wait list for June. I highly recommend you getting on the list so that if openings happen that you, you'll be the first to notify be notified. Um, I think that's all I've got for you right now. Have a great rest of your day. And um, remember, take a little time to be kind to each other and be creative for yourself. Okay, bye everyone.